an open letter to President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. Office of the President and Cabinet, OPC. Munhumutapa Building. Corner Samora Machel Avenue and Sem Nujoma. Harare, Zimbabwe. September 4, 2016. Dear Mr. President. Ref, outrageous disregard for Zimbabwe and people's plight. President Robert Mugabe, I have never ever before written a letter to you during your over 36 years in power in which you have surpassed all records on earth as the most corrupt, incompetent and tyrannical leader. Your recent behavior and actions have unraveled logic and reached unprecedented disregard of the plight of Zimbabwean people as you peddle unashamedly personal interests over national interests. Mr. President you are supposed to be the servant of the people of Zimbabwe who look upon you to deliver prosperity, justice and peace you have always candidly promised but never delivered. Here is what made me write this letter to you. 1. Mr. President the country is so broke that your government is unable to pay civil servants on time for months running and unable to pay for essential services let alone domestic and international debt. It is also unable to deliver employment and essential services, a right to every Zimbabwean and not a privilege. 2. Mr. President we noted with hope that you were going to Mbambane, Swaziland to attend a SADC summit whose theme among others was to come out with strategies to attract FDI especially in the field of renewable energy. We Zimbabweans reeling from unprecedented power cuts and unable to attract FDI, saw this as a necessary regional endeavor to bring about regional investments and hence create employment to which Zimbabwe has the highest unemployment rate in the region if not in Africa. We didn't mind you taking the Boeing 767 ZWPF, 203-seater, Air Zimbabwe plane to the summit although such was not necessary given the state of the economy. 3. Mr. President your stay in Swaziland lasted less than four hours, Bussines, at the two-day SADC summit, to which you commandeered the Boeing 767 back to Harare to pick up your wife and children and diverted the plane for your personal business in Dubai. 4. Mr. President, when we Zimbabweans heard that you left in a hurry before the end of the first-day SADC summit, rumors had it that you had been taken ill. Being the only 92-year-old president in the world, we Zimbabweans understood that if indeed you were ill then it was valid to leave the SADC meeting early than planned. Although we have never agreed with your personal appetite for foreign trips to seek medical treatments, when Zimbabwe should have the capacity to treat all Zimbabweans including your first family. And indeed Africa has the first-class medical facilities to carter for your ailments unless yours is as unique as you being the first president ever to lead a failed state at the age of 92. 5. Mr. President everybody looked forward to your death, not because it is within our culture to do so but that neither is it in our culture for a leader to destroy his country for selfish end, but we saw an end to an era of despot, brutality, oppression, despair and poverty. None of these you have acknowledged but you have failed to explain why you continue to attend medical treatments in Singapore and Dubai, when you have the capacity to empower your own health services for all Zimbabweans. You have as well failed to explain why your own child Bona Mugabe had to deliver a baby in Singapore when we have the best midwives in Africa. You also have failed to explain why your wife has an appetite to shop in Dubai or abroad when your government has passed a statutory instrument. SI, 64 of 2016 banning Zimbabweans from importing essential products to sale for a living in a vendor economy. 6. Mr. President by your own admittance that you had gone to Dubai to attend to personal business, and for enrolling your child at a college in Dubai for that matter is a knock on the teeth of Zimbabweans living in abject poverty. So you chose to leave a sad heads of state meeting for a personal business which tend to be enrolling your own child at a private college? Or was it? You used state resources, the Boeing 767 you used costed the country over $260 million, it has 203 seats, and all that to take your child to a college? So what did you really achieve at SADC meeting in the short two hours you were there, 
Or are you trying to tell us what we don't know about the role of SADC? Who then deliberated on behalf of Zimbabwe at SADC meeting when you had left? Was you presence as a president of Zimbabwe needed to enroll your child at a college when Grace your wife was there? Mr. President, you have failed to get your priority right. 7. Mr. President, we Zimbabweans have never been so angry with you than now. You have shown disregard to our plight, you have shown disregard to the regional effort by SAD. Mr. President you are the greatest authors of our failures, both as a people and as a nation. Your leadership Mr. President stinks of a conspiracy to destroy once jewel of Africa in an appropriation into your own Gushungo fiefdom. 8. Mr. President, whether you leave to see Christmas 2016, know it that, we Zimbabweans have had enough of your incompetence and the gracialization of our plight. On behalf of the millions of Zimbabweans I wish you an early departure from the throne, in whichever godly possible. Yours very angry fellow human being and citizen. Elliot Feb. Email, ipfvatyahoo.co.uk. Twitter, at Feb.